Hey guys, this is Caesar with Nursing School Made Easy. Today's lecture is going to focus on pleurisy. Now, as always, this is geared towards preparing for that NCLEX exam. So, I'm going to make it very, very basic, very, very brief, hit you with the main points that you need to know for the NCLEX exam. So, let's get started. <clears throat> pleurisy is simply inflammation of the pleura or lining of the lungs and chest. So, let's do a real quick drawing here some anatomy, a little physiology. So here we have our thoracic cavity. Now if you remember, in your thoracic cavity, you can have the thoracic cavity, it's going to have a little bit of lining. And also in your lungs, we'll say that this is our right lung. This should be our left lung. Now, again, the lung also has some lining. So in pleurisy, there's an inflammation of either the lining on the lung or again in the chest wall. Now this is very important because anytime you breathe in, anytime you exhale, there's going to be movement of the lung and this lining if it becomes inflamed if it becomes swollen hence the name pleuritis or pleurisy that lining is going to rub up against this side so anytime there is movement it's going to cause severe or sharp pain chest pain so what are some causes of pleurisy or pleuritis pneumonia tuberculosis, some type of pulmonary infarction, some type of neoplasm, or maybe something like an autoimmune disease such as lupus. What are some signs and symptoms, or what are your clinical manifestations? The main thing would be, <clears throat> or the main thing that you need to focus on is sharp chest pain. Again, we talked about how there's lining on your lungs, lining in your uh, thoracic cavity, in your chest wall. So anytime the person, patient, takes a deep breath in, exhales, Again, this is, the lung is going to move, it's going to expand, get smaller. So any type of movement is going to cause this inf inflamed area to cause pain. Again, this is going to be a very sharp and abrupt pain. Now again, this is going to increase during inspiration. Anytime the patient takes a deep breath in, anytime the patient coughs, sneezes, it's going to increase the pain. Now the pain can also radiate to the shoulders or back. Now because of this pain, this painful breathing, patients typically have shallow rapid breathing. And you have to be careful because, again, they're taking very, very shallow breaths. They're, um, it, it's very, very difficult to take a deep inspiration. And we talked about in other lectures, if you don't take deep breaths, this predisposes or makes it very, very likely for the patient to get something like atelectasis, pneumonia, which would only make the problem worse. Now what you also need to remember is that anytime you auscultate the lungs, anytime you, that you listen to those lung sounds, you'll hear a plural, if I can learn how to spell, plural friction rub. Okay. Lining here in your lungs and in your chest wall becomes inflamed, becomes swollen. So anytime you take a deep breath in, these two areas are going to rub up against each other 
and that is what will cause this pleural friction rub. Now this would be a kind of a squeaky door type of noise. And this will be loudest during inspiration. Because that is when, again, most likely for these two to come into contact. Now, yes, it can happen during expiration or when the patient exhales, but it will be loudest during inspiration. So what are some interventions for these patients? <clears throat> Number one, adequate pain control. This will depend on the physician, what he orders, whether it's PO or IV. So make sure you give adequate pain control, control that pain, because again, anytime the patient breathes, anytime there's any type of chest movement, it's going to cause severe pain. If your patient is having a lot of pain, it's gonna make it very, very difficult for them to take deep breaths in, which again, makes it very, very likely for them to get pneumonia or atelectasis. So please control that pain very, very well. Number two, you're going to educate your patient on splinting the rib cage. Anytime they cough, anytime they sneeze, again, that is in hopes of decreasing pain. Now, after you medicate your patient, provide adequate pain control, you want to make sure you encourage, you want to make sure you educate your patient on coughing and deep breathing. Give them their IS. Make sure you teach them how to use it. Make sure they're using it every hour while they are awake. Again, you want to make sure that the lungs maintain uh, their function. You want to make sure that you expand those lungs, again, to prevent atelectasis, to prevent pneumonia. Physician may order something like a chest x-ray to see if the lung has any excess fluid, if there's any pleural effusion. If so, also something like a CT chest may be performed. If it turns out that there's a lot of fluid in the lungs, in that pleural space, something like a thoracentesis may be performed. In this case, fluid will be removed. Now, any time that a thoracentesis is performed, any type of fluid removed from the lungs, again, remember, a needle will be inserted through here into this pleural space. Fluid will be removed. But any time you <clears throat> poke a hole into a lung, you always have to worry about a puncture, a pneumothorax. So please make sure that you always assess your patient uh, for any air hunger. Are they having any dyspnea, any difficulty breathing? Are there O2 sats with the normal limits? So again, after a thoracentesis, you always want to assess your patient. 